should understand that financial management is engaged in procuring funds for the business now what do we mean by retained earnings retained earnings is nothing but the profits of the company which are retained with the company for purposes of expansion etc whenever we are taking a financing decision it will be in the best of the interests of the organization Hello everyone I am Purnima faculty in the department of commerce Vidyashram Pri University College Temple of Excellence In this session I will be taking up a discussion on the ninth chapter that is financial management as we all know finance is the lifeblood of business and all business needs finance so in this chapter there are various concepts of finance which we will be discussing let us see what are the contents of this chapter now in this chapter first we will be having a discussion on the meaning of business finance now what do we mean by business finance what do we mean by finance that we will be discussing and then next we will be discussing about financial management as we all know we know what is management what are the functions of management but then here we will be discussing about what is financial management what is the best way to manage the finances of a business so that we will be having a discussion here and then next we will be having the objectives objectives of what objectives of financial management then later on we will be just having a look at what are the financial decisions what are the investment decisions then we will also be having a discussion on factors affecting capital budgeting decision now what do we mean by capital budgeting and what are the factors which affect capital budgeting then we will be again looking into financing decision so what is the best way to finance the business what are the factors affecting then dividend what is the meaning of dividend and how the dividend decisions are taken and also factors affecting dividend decisions then later on we will be also looking into financial planning how we can plan the finances for a business what is the importance of financial planning what do we mean by capital structure what are the factors affecting choice of capital structure what is the fixed capital what is working capital then how do we manage the fixed capital what are the factors affecting requirement of fixed capital and working capital and also the factors affecting working capital so this is a very huge chapter where you will be learning about the various modes of finance and also how the various uh, decisions are taken and what are the factors which affect the various decisions now in this first concept let us understand what is the meaning of business finance so money is required for carrying out business activities so this is called business finance so whatever money we need to run a business or to start a business so that money we call it as business finance now let us look into what we can do with the help of this finance so almost all business activities require some finance finance is needed to establish a business to run it to modernize it to expand or to diversify it so we should understand that any business cannot be started without finance or money is the main investment through which you can start a business so without money you cannot run a business you cannot modernize it you cannot expand it and you cannot diversify it now this finance is required for the 
purchase of assets of a business so when you decide what kind of a business you want to run then you have to think of what are the fixed assets you need and what are the kind of current assets you need to run the business suppose the business has a heavy investment of fixed assets suppose it is a manufacturing concern then you may need lot of machinery to Uh, to be purchased to run the business now when you are purchasing lot of plant and machinery for the business it requires huge amount of funds then if but if the business requires if it is just a trading concern where you are just involving in buying and uh, selling of goods and services then you may not need large amount of fixed assets but then there is a certain amount of fixed assets which you may need to run the business so depending on the type of business you are planning to do you will be having the amount of business finance you will have to ascertain what is the kind of finance you need to run the business now next let us look into the concept of financial management Financial management is concerned with optimal procurement as well as usage of finance. For optimal procurement, different available sources of finance are identified and compared in terms of their costs and associated risks. So, we should understand that financial management is engaged in procuring funds for the business. Now, when you think of procuring funds it should be from the cheapest available source so when you want to procure funds for the business you have to identify the various sources through which you can procure funds for the business now the financial management involves procuring funds and making the best use of the resources so that they give us huge dividends or they give us huge returns now in this uh, slide we will be just looking into the next meaning of the word financial management so financial management aims at reducing the cost of funds produced keeping the risk under control and achieving effective deployment of such funds it also aims at ensuring availability of enough funds whenever required as well as avoiding idle finance so financial what is the actual aim of financial management now financial management aims at procuring funds from the cheapest source so when you are identifying the source of funds we should make sure that the funds are available at a very cheap rate of interest and secondly we also have to see that the risk is under control so whenever we are borrowing funds there is always the risk of non payment of loans to the organization so where the risk is very minimal from there we have to borrow and then once we borrow the funds we have to ensure that there is effective deployment of such funds so such funds are made the most use of or we make the best use of such fund so that we get maximum returns so what do we mean by maximum returns the return what you are getting the rate of return should be more than the rate of interest we are paying for those funds then financial management also ensures that the business is always well financed that means there is always a flow of business as there is a flow of finance into the organization and it should also ensure that there are no idle funds available in the business now why should we ensure that there are no idle funds in the business because it may lead to theft and embezzlement so we should always ensure that finance for the business whatever is procured it is put to the best possible use and it should ensure best returns for the organization now let us look into what are the factors which are affected by the financial management so the financial management decisions the factors which affect the financial management decisions are the size and 
composition of the fixed assets of the business now as i had told you earlier the size of the business and the composition of the business suppose you want to run the business on a very small scale then the finance required will be very less but if the business is on a very large scale then the amount of funds required will be very much higher and then the composition of fixed assets so if it is a manufacturing concern then investment in fixed assets will be higher but if it is just a trading concern or if it is a service oriented concern then the investment in fixed assets will be lower and this will affect the financial management decisions then the second one is the quantum of current assets and the break up into cash inventory and receivables now the second factor which affects the financial management decision is the amount of current assets needed by the business now by current assets we mean all those assets which are necessary for the day to day running of the business so it may be cash on hand cash at bank it may be bills receivable etc stock etc so all the uh, the amount of current assets you need it will also affect the fm decision then the third factor is the amount of long term and short term funds to be used now these long term funds which will be procured for the business will be used for purchase of long term assets that is the fixed assets and short term funds will be used for purchase of the current assets of the organization now the fourth point affecting the fm decision is break up of long term financing into debt and equity so as we all know whenever the company wants long term finance it can always uh, raise debentures so the debentures can be raised for a period of 5 to 7 years and then it can be redeemed or the company also has the option of raising through equity shares now if you have equity shares if you can issue equity shares then they, that will be better for the company because it will not have any obligation to pay interest but then the ownership of the company will be diluted so that is one factor will have to be looked into before we raise equity shares now in this fifth point there are certain items which are considered as losses to the business they are interest paid expenses of the organization and also the depreciation now if the company has to pay a lot of interest as debenture interest then that will pull down the profits of the company and if there are lot of expenses which have to be catered to by the company then that will also have a bearing on the profits of the company similarly the depreciation so in all we should remember that the financial management decisions are affected by all all these five factors so whenever we make a decision we have to be very careful and we have to consider all these factors before we make any financial management decisions then next let us look into the objectives of financial management here we see the shareholders in the middle and and all the persons who are connected with him they are depicted here in the picture now the objectives of financial management the primary aim of financial management is to maximize the shareholders wealth which is referred to as wealth maximization concept the market price of a company's share is linked to the three basic financial decisions that is investment decision financing decision and dividend decision so the main objective of financial management is to maximize the shareholders wealth now how do we maximize the shareholders wealth 
whenever the share price the market price of the shares increases then it increases the value of shares as a result of which the shareholders wealth will increase now we have to look into those factors or those financing decisions which help in improving the market price of shares so when such decisions improve the market price of shares we call them as good decisions and when those decisions are taken which reduce the market price of the uh, shares then we call them as bad decisions so it is essential for the company when they are taking financing decisions to take good uh, decisions to see that they enhance the shareholders wealth or there is maximization of wealth in the company then next is the investment decision now let us look into what is investment decision so in the investment decision a firm, firm's resources are scarce in comparison to uses which they can be put a firm therefore has to choose where to invest these resources so that they are able to earn the highest possible return for their investors so in investment decision therefore it relates to how the firm's funds are invested in different assets so whenever we are having a uh, maximization of the shareholders wealth it is all based on financing decisions so there are three important decisions which affect the shareholders wealth first one is the investment decision second one is the financial decision third one is the dividend decision now in this investment decision we understand that the firm has to put the finances in most profitable investments now where they get the highest possible return on their investment so the investment decision will tell us how the funds are used and how the way the funds are used in different assets so whenever the business is investing in expansion activities or whenever it wants to set up a new branch it will require lot of funds and then whenever the lot of funds are locked up in one particular area then the business may suffer so whenever huge decisions of investments are to be taken they have to be analyzed regarding the various aspects of cash flow when the business has continuous cash flow there will not be any effect on the investment decisions but then when the cash flow stop then the investment decisions will suffer and moreover once when we take the investment decision they are irreversible so uh, efficient uh, decisions should be taken so that proper returns are available from these investments investment decisions can be classified as long term investment and short term investment decision now the long term investment decisions are called as capital budgeting so capital budgeting decisions are called as long term investment decisions now let us look into what are the various factors which affect the capital budgeting decision there are certain factors which affect the capital budgeting decisions the first factor is cash flows of the project when a company takes an investment decision involving huge amount it expects to generate some cash flows over a period now what is the cash flow from the project so when the company is investing a huge amount in a particular project it has to calculate what is the revenue which will be generated from that particular project so that will affect the capital budgeting decision then the amount of these cash flows should be carefully analyzed before considering a capital budgeting decision so whenever we are analyzing the cash flows from that particular project we have to study whether the cash flow is continuous or whether it is seasonal etc only then we have to take the capital budgeting decision then the next factor affecting the capital budgeting decision is the rate of 
of return the most important criterion is the rate of return of the project these calculations are based on the expected returns from each proposal and the assessment of risk involved so whatever is the rate of return from the project then if the rate of return is very high then it will be feasible to go ahead with that kind of capital budgeting decision suppose the rate of return is of company a is around 15 percent and company b is around 20 percent then the company should opt for this company b because the rate of return is higher so the rate of return will decide the capital budgeting decision the higher the rate of return the more attractive it will be for the company then the the third factor which affects the capital budgeting decision is the investment criteria involved the decision to invest in a particular project involves a number of calculations regarding the amount of investment interest rate cash flows and rate of return there are different techniques to evaluate the investment proposals which are known as capital budgeting decision now the third factor which affects the long term investment is the investment criteria involved so whenever we have to make a huge investment in the business we have to look take into consideration certain factors like what is the amount you are investing and what is the interest rate you have to pay for that investment and also what is the cash generated from that investment and also the rate of return which we are getting so all this have to be calculated and then the capital budgeting decision should be taken now how do we just assess uh, this thing how do we assess this capital budgeting decision so this evaluation can be done through various capital budgeting techniques so there are various capital budgeting techniques through which we can decide the investment involved then the financing decision now let us look into what do you mean by financing decision it involves identification of various available sources the main sources of a firm are shareholders funds and borrowed funds the shareholders funds refers to the equity capital and the retained earnings borrowed funds refers to funds raised through debentures or other forms of debt now the financing decision involves the identification of various sources of funds now if you look into the various sources of funds it involves the shareholders funds and borrowed funds now what do we mean by shareholders funds the shareholders funds are those funds which are raised by the issue of equity shares and issue of preference shares now we also have this concept of retained earnings now what do we mean by retained earnings retained earnings is nothing but the profits of the company which are retained with the company for purposes of expansion etc so this retained earnings or those earnings of the company which are not distributed as dividend they are called as retained earnings and they can be classified as shareholder funds now this constitutes the shareholders funds then other sources of funds identified are borrowed funds now from where can the company borrow it can always borrow from the debenture holders or it can issue debentures and then borrow funds based on the debentures issued and also other forms of debt so there are other forms of debt also which will be discussed in the forthcoming chapters now let us look into what are the various things which we have to look into before taking the financing decision a firm needs to have a judicious mix of both debt and equity in making financing decisions which may be debt equity preference share capital and retained earnings so the source of funds becomes very very important now along with the source of funds we have to also look into the various 
costs involved in raising the funds we all know that the debentures are the most cheapest form of source of funds but then along with the debentures along with the funding we have to have the added burden of payment of interest every year so this will be an unnecessary burden on the profits of the company so it is better to see that whenever we are having whenever we are taking a financing decision it will be in the best of the interests of the organization if the organization has sufficient retained earnings then it may not look for external sources of finance and it can also go in for uh, raising the funds through equity uh, share capital and preference share capital but then whenever we are raising funds through equity share capital and preference share capital when the company raises funds through equity share capital and preference share capital it will have to incur the expenditure called as flotation cost now this flotation cost is the cost incurred when we are raising funds through issue of shares now the company has to look into all these factors before taking the financing decision now the financing decision is concerned with the decisions about how much to be raised and from which source so there are various sources available for the company from which it can raise the finance but then from which source it has to raise that is to be decided and the decision determines the overall cost of capital and the financial risk of the enterprise so whatever is the overall cost of the capital and the financial risk of the enterprise so they will all affect the financing decisions of the company then next let us look into what are the various factors affecting financing decisions the first one is the cost the cost of raising funds through different sources are different a prudent financial manager would normally opt for a source which is the cheapest now the cost of raising funds through different sources are different suppose you are raising funds through shares then you will have to incur flotation cost of then if you are raising funds through debentures then you will have to pay the interest on them then if you are borrowing from banks then you will have to give them collateral and then you have to raise the funds so there are different ways of raising the funds so it all depends on the source which is identified so this will affect the cap uh, financing decisions of the company then the next one is the risk associated with each of the sources is different now if you are borrowing from an external uh, source or if you are borrowing from a bank then there will be risk associated with it the company has to look into the various risks involved and then decide then the next one is the flotation cost higher the flotation cost less attractive the source now we can raise funds through the issue of equity shares because there is no obligation to pay interest but then there is also an added expenditure called as the flotation cost which the company has to incur when it is raising funds through equity shares so if the flotation costs are very high then raising of funds through equity shares will be less attractive then next one is the cash flow position of the company a stronger cash flow position may make debt financing more viable than funding through equity now what do we mean by this cash flow position when the company has continuous revenue which is coming in pouring in daily then it will not bother about the raising funds through equity share capital why it will not bother because whenever we are issuing more and more equity shares that will result in dilution of the ownership of the company so the only viable option for the company is to raise debt by issue of debentures so when you issue debentures and if you have a 
continuous cash flow in the organization it will balance the interest which is being paid for the debenture holders then the next factor affecting financing decision is fixed operating cost if a business has higher fixed operating cost that is building rent insurance premium salaries then it must reduce financing cost so when the company has fixed operating cost like it has to pay the building rent and it has to pay the salaries it has to pay insurance premium etc then it is better for the company not to go in for fixed rate of interest because it will be an added burden to the company then next one is control considerations the issue of more equity may lead to dilution of management's control over the business now whenever there is an issue of control of the business or control of the organization so some organization will think twice before issuing new equity shares now why they think twice because they do not want to have any dilution of control of the organization so when there are more and more equity shares in the organization the organization may go out of hand of the original founders so they will not like to have this and hence raising of funds through equity share capital will be the last resort for such companies then the factors affecting finance decisions are the state of capital market health of the capital market may also affect the choice of source of funds during the period when the stock market is rising more people invest in equity so the state of capital market now what do we mean by capital market what do we mean by money market so all these things will be discussed in chapter 10 but for the time being let us see what this has to tell us the health of the capital market may also affect the choice of funds so if the capital market is booming or if the stock market sees a rising trend in the shares if there is increase in the prices of shares in the stock exchange then it will attract more and more people to invest in equity so as a result of which we can take the financing decision. decisions so these are the various factors which affect the financing decisions so in this session i have just discussed the various aspects of financial management and uh, financing decisions and investment criteria hope you have all understood this session thank you